Okay, so starting off just with our straight up Elgato HD60, you're going to see when you look at the thing, let me just bring it in front of the actual camera, you'll see this play button. This is going to be the output side, you can think, of the Elgato HD60, and the side that doesn't have the play button on it is going to be the input side. So all that means is that this is the side that's going to receive your HDMI from your PS4. So let me just grab that. So this is the HDMI that's coming out of my PS4. So I'm going to plug that into the back of it. Next, we're going to want to get our USB that is coming out of our television, or sorry, not our television, our computer. So this is what's going to give the input to the computer of what we're capturing. So we're just going to plug that into the little USB port you can see in the back there. It's not an actual USB, but it's where this thing connects, basically, is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, next, we're going to need to get our audio hooked up, but not before I connect the HDMI from the television. So here's our HDMI. Obviously, I'm going to clean this up. This is not going to be how I'm going to keep my setup. So this is the HDMI that's coming out of the television. So we're going to need to plug that in right there. And now we need to get our audio. What we're going to need is we're going to need our go-to controller. So this is the controller we're going to be using. Um, and you can obviously interchange these. You don't need to have the, perp the one controller hooked up the whole time. But you're going to take your 3.5 millimeter extender. And you're going to plug in to your controller. I'm just going to lay that down right next to it. And then you're going to need to get your splitter. So that's what you're going to do right there. So now we have our audio coming out of our controller into our splitter and that can be capable of sending essentially our audio signal to our headphones and then to the audio technique or sorry the Elgato itself. So oh my god this cord is way too long. So here's our headphones. I'm just gonna like throw these up on the television. And then we're gonna uh, yep. Okay. We're gonna take our Audio Technica headphone jack and plug it into our 3.5 millimeter. And then I'm just gonna let that fall because I just cannot I cannot hold all these things right now. Then we're gonna take our aux cord and we're gonna plug it in. To our splitter as well. I know this looks disgusting. There's just so many cords going everywhere right now. But it's kind of the only way to do it where it's visual to you guys. I didn't want to set this up behind my computer. I'm going to reset it up uh, once I'm done with this tutorial. And I'm dropping things now. So, see this little 3.5 millimeter port? I don't know if you can see that very well on the Elgato. We're going to plug that in. Boom, boom. We now have it fully set up. So if I'm going to turn on my computer and my PlayStation, we're going to be getting signal. We've got, on the left, that's our actual PlayStation 4 footage that's coming through my television. Then on the right, we've got the computer capture. So I'm just going to go in to my home screen, move my Nest T out of the way. So currently what I'm using is the Elgato HD60 software. And we just got a network error. Great. That's funny. Okay, so I don't actually like the Elgato software. And I'm going to show you guys an alternative. I find Elgato is way more prone to crashes. And when you're recording gameplay, you don't want crashes. When you have a dank clip, you really want to save to post up to those YouTubes for that dirty YouTube money. You don't want to lose your clip at all. That's exactly the opposite of what you want to happen. All right, dudes, so I'm going to show you how to use Open Broadcast Software, a.k.a. OBS, as a replacement for the Elgato Game Capture, and personally, I think this option is better. Keep in mind, it's free software. I'll put a download link in the description, but I'm sure you can find it quickly with a, a Google search as well. In my opinion, OBS provides far more control over what you're doing and what you're making using your Game Capture, and just gives you so many more options to me than Elgato Game Capture does. And not to mention, the whole time I've been using it, I've never once had a crash with OBS. That's over about eight months of capturing with the program. 
in comparison to Elgato Game Capture, I pretty much rage quit using every second time because it would always crash on me despite me having a computer that blows away the required specs for the program. So, starting off, I completely reset my OBS, uh, partly because it's so damn easy to set up using this program that I didn't even mind getting rid of four or five scenes because I can whip them back together in four minutes and it gives a better idea for you guys of what OBS is starting off. So right now I just have a blank slate, but we're gonna add another scene. And the way this program works is each individual scene is something you can toggle through. So say you wanted to have a scene, if you were a streamer and you wanted to have a scene that was a starting soon screen with a bit of music in the background, you could set one of those up and then you could click on your actual broadcast scene and that would bring up your gameplay, your webcam and maybe some overlays. But for right now, we're just gonna talk about raw game capture. So this scene is gonna be called for that reason, raw, oops, raw game capture. Okay, so currently we have absolutely nothing. We're gonna go into our sources and we're gonna click on video capture device. So we're gonna bring that up. Currently, there's nothing already in the program, so we're going to create a new one. We're going to call this Elgato HD60. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it Donkey Slon Game Capture, but that's what I'm going to call mine. So it should bring up devices that are connected that are video capture devices. If you had a webcam hooked up, it would also show up in this directory, but we're going to click, obviously, on our Elgato Game Capture HD. Then we're gonna go into configure video. You don't have to bother with pretty much anything else on this screen. And it's already pretty set up for us. This is coming from kind of my preset, so I'm just gonna reset to default. And this is what you'll see when you first go on to your Elgato game capture. You're gonna see an uh, input device. If you have a PlayStation 4 like I have, you're gonna click on that. Our input is standard HDMI. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to click on analog audio. And this is for a very big reason. You can just capture with regular HDMI, but when you do that, you cannot capture any chat audio coming out of your PlayStation 4 controller. For that reason, I choose to run all audio out of my PS4 controller and use this method. That's why I had that kind of elaborate setup with my audio capture cords. For this reason, if you're playing, say, The Last of Us and you're just doing a story mode single player, you could run just the HDMI and listen from your TV. But with analog audio, you get to hear multiplayer chat, and also you don't necessarily have to have audio coming from your TV speakers this way. That way, if you're running a microphone to get some live commentary, you don't have your TV kind of blaring out and creating an echo. You also want to go into some expanded color range. You're going to want to click on HD 1080, because why would you capture in 720 when you can capture 1080 gameplay? And the last thing we're going to do is just go down to audio and turn that all the way up. You can tweak with some brightness and contrast depending on your television, but for me, we're good here. We're just gonna go into done. So, we have that set up, we're just gonna click okay. And now we're gonna go over to our OBS settings. And if you wanted to stream, you're gonna need to put your, your stream key right there for either YouTube or Twitch gaming. We're also gonna to wanna to go over to video. You're gonna to wanna to set your base resolution to 1080, your output to 1080. If you're capturing from a PS4 or Xbox One, if you're playing PC and you happen to be watching this video for some reason, <laughs> uh, you can dial this up to whatever you want depending on what you're outputting at. You're also gonna to wanna to put your common FPS value to 60 FPS. Now we're also gonna to wanna to go down to our output and this will give us a tab for streaming and recording. Streaming, the video bitrate, this is your megabytes per second output. So my internet has 50 megabytes per second, so I choose around uh, eight megabytes, just so I know this is a range that's gonna provide really good quality for a stream. And I got plenty of bandwidth to do so. You're also gonna wanna go into your recording and you're gonna want to select MP4. I think it's stock FLV, I just prefer the MP4 format. Works with all my editing programs. You also wanna go into recording quality. You can have same as stream, you can have high quality, indistinguishable, or lossless. Now lossless is huge file size and you probably are not gonna need this option unless you're recording in 4K, but there is no 4K PlayStation. So you're gonna wanna go with probably indistinguishable provided you have enough storage space and a PC capable of rendering that out. You also have an option to go into your encoder and change it to NVENC if you happen to have a 
NVIDIA graphics card, you can use that as kind of a, I, I guess, like a secondary encoder, and it will take the strain off your CPU. So that is useful if you do have a lower-end CPU, but a higher-level graphics card, it is definitely an option you can go with. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that OBS, in my opinion, is a much superior recording program. You can also go in, for example, to your microphones, and you can tweak around with this stuff. That's the wrong one. We're gonna to wanna to go into filters. So say your microphone's a bit quiet, you can adjust your gain. You can also go into noise suppression, and I have some nasty fan action. So I got my noise suppression jacked all the way up, and it works really well. I do not hear any fans, and I've got a computer to my left, a PS4 to my right, and I kind of have an open concept department, so I also have a fridge that likes to kick in. And none of that stuff gets picked up on my microphone, which is really good. I really like it, and Elgato in comparison offers exactly no. There's absolutely no real customization and control on your microphone from that program. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful. And if you did, leave a like down below. And if you have any more questions, I know I didn't cover absolutely everything about Elgato, more so just the way I have my setup done. So if you got any questions, leave it down below. I've dicked around a lot with this game, or sorry, with this hardware. So I probably can answer it. So don't hesitate to leave a comment. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you soon.